Hello, my name is Logan Weitzel, and today I'll be presenting my summer research project titled Designing, Building, Testing, an FCIR Electromagnet. I conducted this research at the University of Delaware through UD Charm, and I was supervised by Dr. Stephanie Law and Young Chen Liang. Before I get into the research I conducted, I feel like it was important to discuss the material that I was studying and the aspects I wanted to elucidate. So I was studying the relatively new but important material called topological insulators, TIs. TIs are materials that basically have an insulator at their core and conducting things on their surface. Now, some are speculating that these materials could be used as interconnects for integrated circuits and materials for thermoelectric science and technology. Now, the specific aspect that I wanted to study was its behavior under a magnetic field. And in order to quantify these results, we figured FCIR would be the best way. Now, this brings us to the mission statement for my summer research project, and that is design an electromagnet that can apply a tunable field in a vacuum of space of a Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy machine. Now, I must go into my methods before I get into the fundamentals. So the fundamentals of electromagnetism are where I started. So electromagnets are created when a conductive wire is wrapped around a metallic core. And then when current runs through that wire, the electrons circulate, resulting in a magnetic field. I kept those principles close to my heart and then developed more advanced when it went into the design. So the shape of the magnet needed to match closely with the FTR transmission slide. Thus, this meant that I would need to protrude a cylindrical shape off of it in order to wind the coil around it. So the cylindrical shape I decided was a solenoid because there's a nice easy mathematical formula that can give you a theoretical number for your magnetic field. And that is quantified by the solenoid mag magnetic field equation, which is B equals mu n l. And now to the experimental process where step one was to determine the gauge material of the wire. I had to pick between silver and copper, but ultimately chose copper due to its price and it had good enough conductivity. We needed to figure out the American wire gauge or AWG size of the wire. So this meant creating a Python program that would input all of my results and all of the sizes of wire and then spit out one that was good, which was 22 AWG. Step two was find the material for the core, and I had to choose between a material that could help boost it or a material that would not impact it. I ultimately chose a material that would not impact it, which was aluminum, because if I chose something that could boost it, it theoretically could cause problems with the results. So aluminum was the best choice because of low retentivity, easy to machine, and would not impact the magnetic field. Step three was just winding the magnet, which is just we made a simple machine that could help with that. <laughs> Step four was test the magnet for its field strength, which was important because we needed to know what we had when we put it into the FTIR. So we devised a series of tests. The first two tests were starting from the top of the coils and going 6.5 amps down to one amp and then stop. And we did that same test, but from 30 millimeters. And then the other two tests that were more helpful were we started from the top of the coils, and we changed the amp from 6.5 and decreased it by 0.5 increments all the way down to zero and then increased by 0.5 increments all the way up to 6.5. Repeated that five times and averaged all the results. And then we also did that from 20 millimeters from the top of the coils. So the first test was from the top of the coils and we didn't have enough data and like points to really extrapolate something that could help. So that was a problem we ran into with the first two tests. This is from the top of the coils, and this one is from 30 millimeters from the top of the coils. But when we did the other test, the 6.5 to 0 to 6.5, this is the top of the coils. And as you can see, the results are a lot more consistent. And we actually got a field strength of about 9 millitesslas, which we thought was very good for a aluminum-based electromagnet. And this one is the same test, but from 20 millimeters from the top of the coil. So we can see that our field is still doing all right and still very consistent. So in conclusion, we have a reliable working magnet and a graph that can help find field and we can find the amps that we need. And another big safety precaution that we were able to conclude is that 
the wires do not heat up to a point of danger, which is very important for our research. Thank you very much.